Um, so, um, this gentleman uh, has a bump, um, a benign growth, and hopefully it's benign. Uh, we're going to biopsy it and find out. It, statistically, it's likely uh, a salivary lesion called a pleomorphic adenoma, um, which is benign, but if left too long, can actually turn into something malignant. Now, if you take a look at this, there's this depression, because when we took the impression, um, this is where that bump was. Now, when we pour this up and make a stone model, we want that void to be filled in. So I took some of this stuff, some of this wax rope, which is pretty soft and pliable if you look at it. You can kind of bend it and shape it. Uh, made it into a little ball and then shaped it so that it fits into that defect in the impression. And so then what we'll do is we'll just kind of hold it in place. So you can kind of see that when the stone model is made, it's going to look... Um, pretty much like the opposite side so that we don't have a bump on that stone model so then when we make a plastic matrix which you're going to see it will sit over top and uh, fill in that void um, at the time when we remove the entire lesion for today what we did was an incisional biopsy where we took a portion of it away uh, to find out exactly what it is so that we know the surgical approach to remove um, the uh, rest of it in entirety He'll, he was awake for this procedure and will be asleep for the next procedure. So this is what the um, piece of uh, wax uh, looks like. Kind of gives you a feel for you know what the uh, the defect um, will look like in the future. Kind of sits in like this, and then um, we'll use some uh, Vaseline um, to one create a little bit of a suction here on the inside to help this just kind of stay somewhat still. Let me put it in place. See if I get the right way again. There we go. And then we'll put a little bit of Vaseline on the surface just so it doesn't stick to the stone. It's a little bit easier to separate. So the next step is um, my trusty sidekick Vanessa will pour this up and make this uh, vacuform uh, matrix and a little suck down to help with the surgical. Alright, thanks. percent overall drop in opioid use and with the proper understanding and use of Expril, you too can see the success that Expril will bring to your clinic. Dr. McClelland, DDS, has been using it in his clinic for a few years now, and he's seen great success in his patients and their pain management every day. In this six-video series, you get a professional master class that will give you the jump start you need to include Expril in your daily routine. It includes a bonus PDF with a patient information handout post-op medical instructions, and a quick look sheet for the materials and supplies for explaining Expril. Go to teachable.com today and get educated on a non-opioid anesthetic that will help your patients have a better day.